Hello everyone, welcome to this little discussion video. Haven't done one of these uh, for a while. I've done a few on this channel, things like uh, what would be your Desert Island Disc, the album that if you had only one album to listen to for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, we also did some fun like Discord uh, voting for what the best album covers and the worst album covers were. Uh, and I haven't w done one of these in a while. I want to get back to these kind of uh, easy, uh, simple, one-off kind of videos, just sort of talking about music. And as you can tell from the title of the video today, uh, I asked uh, some people on my Discord, it was actually all the way back in April, um, it's taken me a while to make this, uh, I said, question for a future video, how much do you attribute your love of music to parents, siblings, general family, uh, and then you can give as much of a, a backstory on how you came to love music. So had a lot of people uh, comment on this. Some people were very verbose. Some people um, had very little to say. Um, so we'll just go by through each one. And then at the very end of this, uh, I'll kind of tell you my own little uh, simple story. Um, so the first one here is from Minto. Some of it comes from them. Most of the R&B and jazz I love, I got introduced to by my parents. Uh, but a lot of the rock stuff, especially on the alt side, uh, I'm into, I got into entirely on my own. Well, not on my own, but not all influenced by my parents. My sister likes a lot of the modern hip hop I'm into, but besides that, not really. I don't really get to talk about music much with people I know IRL. They either don't know or don't care. Um, I can kind of, uh, sympathize with that and empathize with that a little bit, um, I don't know a whole lot of other people IRL that are as into music as I am. Uh, generally, I will probably like something that most people I know like, uh, but there's many things I like that they don't, uh, which is fine, It, uh, but it sometimes makes for like, I, I wouldn't say awkward conversations, but like uh, when you're putting on a playlist and the Beach Boys comes on and you're like, yes, and then like a sibling is like, it, uh, you know, it, it doesn't feel great, but it, it is what it is. Um, at the same time, music that feels very special to you, not being able to share that with some people and have it land can kind of suck. But, you know, it's 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 the way of, way of the world. Stroke Jam says, my dad showed me the typical boomer rock bands, which I eventually expanded upon as of now, and I made my mom like the Cocteau Twins. Nice, well done. Thrifty says, my love for music was self-learned mostly. Just had a Casey and the Sunshine Band Greatest Hits tape and a big Willie style CD. No idea what those are. Growing up for music uh, before I watched MTV Hits and went on YouTube watching Guitar Hero and Lupe Fiasco videos. Um, I actually discovered some interesting music from Guitar Hero and Rock Band actually, as well as uh, Singstar. Singstar is another one. Um, where I, I, I hear the songs, that's how I got into Blur. Song two was in SingStar. Um, so, you know, it, it, those are those are valid uh, valid ways of getting into music for sure. Varaxadar says, my close family is mostly music enjoyers. And so I was influenced by my parents' love to 80s synth pop and disco songs. My brothers were probably my biggest reason for getting into music. My oldest brother, uh, metal slash classic rock slash prog rock, pilled me <laughs> with bands like Pink Floyd, Metallica, Dire Straits, Iron Maiden. My second brother got me more into alt rock, indie, garage rock side, Arctic Monkeys, uh, Coldplay, Radiohead. Uh, also, shout out to my English teacher from primary school who was like my second mom and made me obsessed with the Beatles. Um, yeah, that I'm not gonna get into it now, but uh, I have a similar like smattering with my siblings as far as like getting me into a variety of uh, bands and genres and sounds. And I, I think I, I oh, like I said, I'll get into that later. But I think that attributes largely to why I'm able to enjoy more um, because I was influenced more by older siblings. But again, we'll get into it. Ray Schuster, good to see you, mostly through my friends and my own interest. Uh, from older brothers, I have a pretty good knowledge of the classic rock era, Zeppelin, Who, Beatles, Stones, and so on. Seems to be a running uh, element through these things is the classic rock, um, kind of either from older older siblings or parents. Uh, also know the post slash post-punk late 70s, early 80s era pretty well. Joy Division, Echo and the Bunnymen, magazines, public image, class, jam, etc. From my brothers as well. 
So about 70% friends slash self-learned, 30% brothers, nothing from the parents except maybe Elvis, Presley, Sinatra. I'll get into that as well. Mario says, a lot of my earliest memories are of experiencing music with my family. I still remember listening to Please by Pet Shop Boys with my older brother and being absolutely bamboozled by the layers they put into their music. My parents still both listened to basically anything 90s and prior, but when my brothers grew up, they both branched into separate genres of music that they enjoyed. Oddly enough, they don't really enjoy each other's taste so much, but I've grown to appreciate both, so I have a little bit of everything in my family's musical palette now, as well as my own discoveries. That's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. Um, again, it's uh, like a, a variety of, of genres from, from various people is a running th uh, thread that I'm seeing through here. Uh, Sponge says... Family and music go hand in hand for me. Some of my earliest memories are my family taking me to see music or playing music in the car, etc. One of my earliest memories is my parents taking me to a festival when I was four and sitting on my dad's shoulders watching Morrissey and having pizza afterwards. Sponge is a huge Morrissey fan, by the way, so there you go. And whenever I hear seasick yet still docked, I get straight, sent straight back to that day. My mom and dad showed me music properly, so did my siblings. Um, Music is probably the most important things in our lives and it brings us together when we are together. I agree. I agree. Destub says, The first times of me liking music and dancing and singing to my parents' favorite music and TV series theme songs are in hu high, huge, high, huge value to my parents. Of course, they said positive words and stuff and got me to sing some years in local choir later. But they never really showed me stuff like listen to the, this and this and come back liking music even more than ever. Uh, I found my music myself and so did my mom and dad back when they were in that age of searching stuff they respect my music taste and that is good today when we are all together we listen to some music from the radio and from my parents vinyl collection we have fun playing hit and miss and we also jam with whatever we got in hands we love music 100 percent. that's nice that's a uh, like a, a example of like we uh we don't necessarily all see eye to eye on the genres um but we like to kind of you know show each other the stuff that we like that's cool zazashi is that how you say it? I was not really into music until the age of 17 when I met this girl in my school. Classic. With whom I fell in love with. Also classic. We had great music taste and shared some of it. Uh, she had great music taste and shared some of it with me. I always thought of her as superior to me and really wanted to be more like her someday. Part of the road uh, was diving deep in some music genres and discovering artists that changed my life forever. I will forever be grateful to her just for that. That sounds like a, like a perks of being a wallflower uh, she, she gave you a slow dive mixtape kind of a thing, which I'm all for. I sort of got into music on my own, music like Pink Floyd, Radiohead, until I started hearing some more experimental records, but my dad's always been into jazz, and eventually I did too. Yeah, Slate um, has recommended a ton of jazz. He's kind of our jazz guy here on the, on the Discord. Um, tons of good stuff. My love of music started with my father. He would listen to every single band he enjoyed in the 80s, list included, got all those there. He started me off as hair metal as uh, uh, as hair metal new wave listener, and then I started wandering off. Found out about techno, ambient music, uh, then vaporwave was my thing for four years. Now my listening to different genres are broad, except rap and country. Uh, always, uh, rap, country, Christian, right? My defaults now are post punk, goth, and trip hop album, uh, '90s albums like Portishead. Very nice, very very solid upbringing there. Uh, Kafka. My dad played the drums in an easy listening light jazz band. Dude, that's legit. You had a residency at a club and would also play backup to guest singers during the doing the club circuit. So that was my first exposure watching my dad play. That's cool. Then when I was older, I started playing drums too. If you're 18 and there's a drum kit laying around, you're going to play it. I, I played a drum kit once. Uh, we lived in a basement apartment, which you can still see in some of my old videos um, from like 20... 2014, I believe, up until like 2017 or 18. Um, and the guys who lived above us were these college guys, and one of them had a drum kit. And uh, like they were all gone for one week, and so we had to like, I don't know, take care of something up there or whatnot. And um, I got to go up there and I played the drum set in, in his bedroom. Um, and I sucked. I realized like that's one thing that I need to get good at before I can do it. I can't just pick it up like any other instrument at this point in my life. Anyway, when I was a kid, 
My older brother would listen to Motorhead, ACDC, Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath, and some of that stuck. I still love Motorhead. But then I heard The Holy Bible by Manic Street Preachers, which came out when I was 17, and there probably isn't a better age to first hear that record than 17. It's perfect. And that set me on my course musically, really. From that, I went back to Joy Division, Gang of Four, uh, Public Image Limited. Is that right? P I L. <laughs> Wire, loads of post punk, and then on into post rock shoegaze and beyond. Nice. Favorite album, Lift Your Skinny Fist. Good man. Still love a good jazz drummer, though. Nice. That's a nice, nice little uh, backstory there. I appreciate it. Now, Z Twig. You guys might know him, uh, kind of infamous on this channel. Um, the biggest post by far. So uh, let's. Let's go through this. Music has always been a gigantic part of my life and family. Even back to when I was a baby, my parents always had something playing through the house like jazz or classical. I don't like jazz. I don't like classical. It's a bit crazy because some of the jazz they used to play when I was that young, I strangely recognize it now on my first listen. As I grew older, my taste basically just consisted of trashy early 2010s pop music and a few Beatles Rolling Stones songs. My parents' record collection is absolutely astonishing to a second grader, and I was always super interested by it. Finally, at Christmas of third grade, I was able to play the records. Charlie Brown Christmas, Phil Spector's Christmas album, and Frank Sinatra's were constantly being played by me after that. My parents, I guess, recognized my love for vinyl and bought a stack of 100 to my room and just told me, educate yourself. This kind of thing is why I'm so thankful for them. They let me decide what was to be my taste and stuff. Some clear standouts from this stack would be Arcade Fire Funeral, White Stripes Elephant, and the two that shaped my taste the most, Sonic Youth Goo and Spaceman 3 Playing With Fire. We now enter my insufferable era at school, where I would get offended when fellow peers did not know who these people were. Let's be real, I never got out of my insufferable era. Anyway, I downloaded Amazon Music and just explored everything that it had to offer in my parents' account, uh, which I discovered a ton of new stuff from. Then the, this would then lead them to take me to some of my first concerts like Spiritualized, Depeche Mode, Tame Impala. Dude, that's legit for your first concerts. My music taste from this point onwards was less influenced by my parents around 2019 as I was getting a lot of stuff from YouTube and learning about electronic rave culture. Uh, I have to owe some of this up to my mom, though, as she was a raver back in the 90s. I obsessively listened to artists like The Prodigy and Orbital around this period. Uh, this then uh, would lead me into getting into artists like Aphex Twin, Square Pusher, Boards of Canada, and Autiker. Is that how you say it? I got even more pretentious once I, g I got into Sonic Youth's SYR series, as that was some whack ass free improv music. This led me into the far reaches of music with stuff like Mersbo, Coil, and some free jazz. This IDM experimental music basically lasted up until when lockdown first happened, which is when I had a revelation about jazz music. I always liked jazz. You like jazz? As I said, my parents would play a ton of it as a kid, but now I was heavily into it as a genre and explored a ton of it through a newfound site named Rate Your Music, which uh, then led me to be active on music discords. I attended a ton of different servers where there were listening parties for albums and genres that I had never even heard anything close to. This was my musical discovery peak, in which I was obsessed with jazz and finding out all about underground music communities as well as meeting a ton of people. My taste got more and more esoteric from here, but it could always be traced back down to my parents' roots, whether that be my mom's love for shoegaze and 90s electronica, or my dad's for lo-fi rock and just tons of random stuff. They definitely presented a problem for me, however, some of their strongest opinions did rub off on me for a while and I wasn't able to enjoy some key artists for my taste now, such as Kate Bush, Bjork, and some metal. For anyone who has known me for any period of time before maybe mid to late 2021, I hated them with a passion, but learned to separate myself from my parents' tastes, luckily, in the future. My parents definitely did blind me from some stuff, though, as they absolutely love the poop water that is Joy Division and post-punk revival. If there is one more complaint, I would just say that they definitely know how to overplay a song they get obsessed with because, man... Uh, so much music has been ruined from things like that. Overall, I can't thank them enough for what they have done for me because while well, music is what has pushed me and brought me through life, without it, I would have not been on this planet anymore and I would not have as many great memories. I owe this all to my parents. What a lovely comment. Bless your parents. Um, I will say, we've talked a bit about this on the channel. Uh, 
I, and I forget, um, I may have done a poll or like asked people uh, directly. Um, do you like to just constantly shift to new music or do you like to listen to death, something that you love until it goes a bit stale and then come back to it later? Um, and I'm definitely someone, if I love a song, I will listen to it a bunch, maybe even on like repeat or an album on repeat, um, until it goes a bit stale and then I'll come back to it, you know, months or years later. But anyway, that's, uh, all the comments from the people in my discord, uh, very, very lovely set of comments. Now, my own personal story, um, I'll, I'll just go into very briefly here. Not that, I mean, I guess you're subscribed to me, so you'll find it interesting, but uh, to me, it doesn't seem that interesting. But, you know, such is the weird thing of being a performer or a YouTuber, you know, that you're, you're acting vain, but even if you don't feel vain. Um, so I was born in 92. I am one of nine kids. Uh, the seven kids above me um, are considerably older than I am. My oldest brother was born in 70 something. Uh, so he's in his fifties at this point. Um, yeah, all seven kids above me. Uh, the sister above me is I think six to 10 years older than I am. I, I'm not quite sure. Um, and I believe I was, a an accident or at least unintentional. Um, and I, I arrived into the family and then, uh, I had a younger sister uh, after because my parents thought that I shouldn't grow up uh, so alone without anyone my age. And funnily enough, we did not get along. <laughs> we're, we're, we're fine today, but as, as kids, we, we fought all the time. Um, so growing up, um, my parents would listen to... My dad didn't listen to much. Uh, he does love jazz. Uh, and I've actually... Uh, here, I'll show you real quick. He, uh, he gave me this, uh, this vinyl here. Um, which is a, a nice Brubeck vinyl. And I believe it's from 19... Is it 1954? 56? Something like that? Uh, I believe it was an initial pressing of this of this vinyl that still exists. It sounds awful. Uh, it's so scratchy you can't hear the music at all. Um, but he loves things like Dave Brubeck, Miles Davis, uh, and a good handful of um, like he likes some Johnny Cash. He's not been super into music from what I can tell. My mom loves a lot of uh, classic doo-wop, some Brill Building stuff, um, Elvis. Uh, girl group things, bubblegum pop from the 60s, uh, some stuff. And I, for a long time, I, I couldn't stomach it. I was like, because she had compilation CDs playing all the time in the house while she was cleaning or making dinner. And I just got so tired of Elvis and all these other sugary uh, old songs. Uh, but after being out of the house for a while, I've, I've come to love a lot of doo-wop and brill building. And it's some of my favorite music, actually, especially like even modern representations of those uh, types of music structures. But um, growing up, my siblings weren't into a lot of music. Uh, it was a Christian household. So a lot of my siblings were listening to like DC talk, audio adrenaline, um, my second oldest brother, Greg, uh, was really into grunge. Um, and we actually talk to this day, uh, about like the, the different types of music that he listened to that he wasn't allowed to say that he listened to. Uh, so he was into, you know, Pearl Jam, um, was it Hole, Hole or Garbage? The Courtney Love one? I don't know. Uh, Nirvana, obviously. Um, and so we've had fun talking about, uh, uh, Smashing Pumpkins, uh, fun talking about those, those types of bands, the kind of, uh, you know, dirtier alt rock of, of the day. Um, and so he kind of had to just listen to like Christian <laughs> equivalents of that, which were like the ones I mentioned before, but I also had a ton of cringy, like, uh, Christian contemporary pop crap as well. Um, that I just, I, I obviously don't listen to anymore cause I just think it's, it's, weak music on its own. Um, so, you know, I'm growing up, I'm, I'm listening to like newsboys and audio adrenaline and it's just it's cringe fest. Um, and then right around 2007, 2008 is when I start to kind of listen to more contemporary radio hits. Um, I'm hearing things like Coldplay, The Killers, um, various other things. I have, um, you know, siblings who have moved out of the house at this point. I go over to, you know, their place and they're playing whatever music they like. Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, stuff like that. 
And I remember vividly, like my musical awakening, which was we were at my sister's house, sister and brother-in-law, and they always had their like iPod classic with the spin wheel uh, playing something on shuffle on the, on the speaker. And Karma Police by Radiohead came on. And I was like captivated. I'm like, this is so cool. Um, this was shortly after, I believe it was after, I started taking some piano lessons just for fun um, because we had a keyboard and I had uh, found a video on YouTube of how to play uh, Apologize by One Republic. And I'm like, hey, I know this song. And it's like, oh, that's actually like not that hard to play. I just need to know what notes I'm pushing and I can play a song, that's cool. So I started to like learn songs from this YouTuber, um, Go Titans 999. I think he's piano keys now on on YouTube, but he's he's still semi-active, uh, making piano tutorials. But that's how I started to get into piano. And my parents were like, "Hey, you want to take lessons?" I'm like, "Sure." So I was taking lessons, kind of examining music theory, learning chords and and scales. And then I heard Karma Police, and I'm like, "This is insane! Like, this is unlike anything I had heard before." Uh, and I could actually analyze it and be like, what are these chords? Uh, so I got deep into Radiohead. Uh, I was also very much into Coldplay at the time. Those are my two big bands. I listened to them a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of how it started for me. I also uh, was getting much more into Coldplay because I needed something that was a little more tame. Something that was a little more... Uh, calmer because uh a lot of the stuff that my sister and brother-in-law were listening to um i didn't feel was good for me to listen to as someone developing as a teenager it's like my prefrontal cortex isn't there all the way i don't want to influence myself with stuff that's angsty like if i don't feel angsty why am i listening to angsty music that just makes me feel angsty even though i'm living a perfectly fine happy life so i'm like all right i need to distanced myself from some of this punk, from some of this more hardcore rock. Um, and I just kind of like de-stressed with like Coldplay. So Parachutes was a huge album for me. It's still my favorite album for that reason, um, because it kind of solidified my love of dream pop and soft rock and more ambient sounds. Um, and I, I've just come to love music that makes me feel this peace. Um, I very much am a peaceful person at heart, and I try to convey that with the own, my own music that I make. Um, just this, this feeling of like serenity. Um, so that was very important for me as well. And um, yeah, time goes on. I'm making piano tutorials on YouTube. You can still find them here if you sort by oldest. Uh, you can find some of my covers of songs as well. I, I covered uh, Bella's Lullaby from Twilight uh, and mainly learned it so that I could impress the girls at youth group, which I did. And I made a tutorial for it. It's my most watched video on here, like one and a half million views. And that was kind of like the rocketing of my channel um, was was making those videos. Um, many of those viewers are probably, I want uh, the viewers aren't dead. The accounts are probably dead and they're not watching me anymore. Because even though I have, at the time of this video, about 10 and a half thousand subscribers, there's no way I have that many active viewers. Um, I probably have three to 4,000 active subscribers at this point, I would say. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of my story. Um, and then I, I started doing these, uh, I was using YouTube for a, a smattering of different ideas. I did, I've done book videos, music videos, movie videos, video game videos. I've like, I've dabbled in all these creative things, everything except for like illustration basically, which I suck at, as well as drums. <laughs> uh, and then I realized, uh, I found, what's his name, Nighthawk? someone who did like Radiohead album reactions. I saw him do In Rainbows. And I'm like, ooh, album reactions, that's cool. And he wasn't annoying uh, like a lot of the other album or song reactors on YouTube were, where they're like, wow! Uh, he was just like, ooh, yeah, I like this. And I realized, hey, I could do the same thing. A, it would be a good excuse to make content and keep my channel alive, and B, I'd be able to actually like listen to more music that I maybe wouldn't have otherwise. And now here we are, a hundred and over a hundred and fifty albums later, over like almost three hundred songs later. All these live streams we've done, um, and uh, there's just still so much more for me to listen to. So I want to thank everyone who subscribed 
uh, has subscribed, watches my stuff, enjoys the content, um, as part of this community on Discord and in the comments. Um, it's just a very nice, happy community. Um, there's very, sometimes I'll get the random person coming across my video being like, wow, you're such an idiot. Go back to Justin Bieber. I get that comment a lot, specifically Bieber. Uh, they, they, they've run out of insults, um, <laughs> but for the most part, you're all fantastic. Everyone who sticks around, uh, just great people, um, very cordial. And, uh, I'm just very blessed to be able to, uh, to do this and make these videos. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it wasn't too long winded. Uh, hope you got something fun out of it. Let me know in the comments uh, about your backstory with music, um, as far as who influenced you and, um, you know, uh, whether it's friends or family, that kind of stuff would love to know. And also be sure to like and subscribe. I'll put a, a graphic. So it's really flashy, which means you should do it uh, because I'm a professional. Trust me. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more content and I will catch you around. Godspeed. Godspeed.